Race Against Time, Searching for Hope in AIDS Ravaged Africa. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Race Against Time, Searching for Hope in AIDS Ravaged Africa is a non-fiction book written by Stephen Lewis for the Massey Lectures. Lewis wrote it in early to mid-2005, and House of Anansi Press released it as the lecture series begin in uh, October 2005. Each of the book's chapters was delivered as one lecture in a different Canadian city, beginning in Vancouver on October 18th and ending in Toronto on October 28th. The speeches were aired on CBC Radio 1 between November 7th and 11. The author and orator, Stephen Lewis, was the then United Nations Special Envoy for HIV-AIDS in Africa and former Canadian Ambassador to the United Nations. Although he wrote the book and uh, lectures in his role as a concerned Canadian citizen, his criticism of the United Nations, UN, international organizations, and other diplomats, including naming specific people, was called undiplomatic and led several reviewers to speculate whether he would be removed from his UN position. In the book and the lectures, Lewis argues that significant changes are required to meet the Millennium Development Goals in Africa by their 2015 deadline. Lewis explains the historical context of Africa since the 1980s, citing a succession of disastrous economic policies by international financial institutions that contributed to, rather than reduced, poverty. He connects the structural adjustment loans with conditions of limited public spending on health and education infrastructure to the uncontrolled spread of AIDS and subsequent food shortages as the disease infected much of the working age population. Lewis addresses discrimination against women and primary education for children. To help alleviate problems, he ends with potential solutions, which mainly require increased funding by G8 countries to levels beyond what they promise. Book reviewers found the criticisms constructive and the writing sincere. His style focuses less on numbers and statistics and more on connecting decisions by UN officials and Western diplomats to the consequences on the ground in Africa. His eyewitnesses' accounts are said to be candid and emotional. The book spent seven weeks at the number one on the Globe and Mail's nonfiction bestseller list. A second edition was released in June 2006. The Canadian Booksellers Association awarded its Libris Award for Nonfiction Book of the Year to Race Against Time and its Author of the Year Award to Lewis in 2006. Background At the time of publication, the author, Stephen Lewis, aged aged 67 and living in Toronto, worked as the United Nations Special Envoy for HIV-AIDS in Africa, a position he held since 2001. Previously, he worked as the Deputy Director of United Nations Children's Fund, 1994-1999, as the Canadian Ambassador to the UN, 1984-1988, and as the leader of the Ontario New New Democratic Party, 1970-1979. After Lewis optimistically accepted the Special Envoy position, he he became increasingly distraught by the devastation he witnessed. Already a skilled orator, he became more vocal on the topic. He founded the Stephen Lewis Foundation, hosted Oprah Winfrey as uh, she toured Africa, and was the subject of two award-winning documentaries by The Nature of Things, entitled Race Against Time and The Value of Life. Meanwhile, he was appointed as a companion to the Order of Canada, awarded the Pearson Medal of Peace, and named Canadian of the Year 2003 by Maclean's Magazine. In 2005, he was invited to deliver the annual series of Massey Lectures from which the book Race Against Time was adapted. He wrote the text in early to mid-2005 and delivered the lecture series in October when the book was released. Lewis wrote the book not as an employee of the UN, but as a citizen concerned with the world's response to the AIDS challenge in Africa. Content The book consists of five chapters, from which the five lectures were derived, Context, Pandemic, Education, Women, and Solutions. Before these chapters are sections titled Preface and Acknowledgements, and afterwards a glossary section. The book's second edition contains an afterward section written in May 2006. In the preface, written by Lewis in August 2005, he states that his preferred genre is the spoken word, and that the nature of the topic would not allow him to comprehensively cover every aspect. He justifies his writing by proclaiming himself a devotee to the United Nations and outlines the roles he had held with the organization since 1984. In the first chapter, Lewis tells anecdotes of visits to Africa and other UN-related events, like in 1986, brokering the resolutions from the General Assembly's 13th Special Session. 
He acknowledges colonialism and Cold War ideologues as historical influences on the African situation, but focuses on the effects of international finance institutions, conditional loans, since the uh, late 1980s. In the second chapter, Lewis discusses his history of Africa, beginning in the 1960s as an English teacher in Ghana. He contrasts Africa of the 1960s shedding colonial rule, optimistic and future prospects, with the Africa of the 2000s struggling with AIDS and increasingly widespread hunger. He acknowledges the brain drain trend, noting there are more Malawian doctors in Manchester than in Malawi. In the third chapter, Lewis examines how the UN, World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund, IMF, failed to fulfill promises of free access to primary education. In the instances where school entry fees were eliminated, additional fees, for example, fees for uniforms, books, exams, and registration, had the same effect of limiting access. The fourth chapter elaborates on how women's issues are ignored or dismissed at international conferences and by African governments. Lewis identifies the gender discrimination that occurs even within the UN organization, whose management staff was dominated by males. He links the World Bank and IMF conditions of low social spending on education and health care by governments of recipient countries to the rampant uh, spread of AIDS in those same countries. The disease decimated Africa's working age and farming population, leading to famine. He calls on the international financial, financial institutions to pay reparations in the form of debt relief. Lewis concludes that dramatic changes are required to meet the Millennium Development Goals by 2015. In the final chapter, he considers some potential measures that could help at, in Africa. He laments the shortfalls in funding by G8 countries, despite the continued renewed promises for full funding of the Millennium Development Goal implementation. His proposed measures include, one, the expansion of the Jubilee Coalition to include cancellation of agricultural subsidiaries, uh, two, the amalgamation of UN Development Fund for Women, the UN Division of the Advancement for Women, and relevant portions of the United Nations Population Fund into one UN agency uh, funded to a similar level as UNICEF. Three, to main, uh, the maintenance of uh, the momentum of the World Health Organization's 3x5, 3 million people treated by 2005 program. Four, addressing revenue shortfall in the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria through donations from private sector organizations that profit from Africa, example, pharmaceutical companies. Five, creating an agency that can provide emergency food aid in much shorter time frame than current programs. Six, supporting Jeffrey Sachs' Millennium Village Project. Seven, investing in vaccine and microbiome research. Eight, eliminating school fees for primary education. 9. Using microcredit money pots for women to care for orphans. 10. Planning for capacity replacement on a country-by-country, sector-by-sector, 242 basis. Style. The writing style reflects the author's intent to use the text for a lecture series. The narration addresses the audience while guiding it through explanations of the issues and anecdotal illustrations. Lewis's charismatic, eloquent, and energetic oration style is reflected in the writing. The tone has been described as loud and persuasive. One reviewer called it, quote, vintage Lewis, incisive criticism leavened with uh, high-blown rhetoric, unquote. The book focuses more upon real-world human experiences rather than numbers and statistics and discussing the effect of AIDS on sub in uh, sub-Saharan Africa and the world's response. Lewis's eyewitness accounts are candid and vivid. For example, he recounts tours of hospitals and schools as he explains the dire straits of national health and education sectors, and he describes meetings with diplomats and staff from the UN, World Bank, and IMF as he explains their effect on foreign aid policies. The book is written from an idealistic perspective, and despite the anger and underlying sense of guilt, Lewis remains optimistic. While he ha was a professional diplomat, his memoir-style reflections on specific people, such as Mikhail uh, Kemdesis, Carol Bellamy, and Thabo Mbeki, were called undiplomatic. Despite the book's undiplomatic style, Lewis retained his post as UN Special Envoy until the term completed in 2006, December. Publication The book was released on October 18th as Lewis began the Massey Lecture Series in Vancouver. The second lecture took place in Winnipeg on the 20th, followed by Montreal on the 22nd, Halifax on the 26th, and ending in Toronto two days later. The series was recorded, then aired on CBC Radio 1's Ideas between November 7th and 11th. At each event, Lewis fielded questions from the audience and participated in book signings. The publisher, House of Anansi Press, 
was on the last year of its contract with CBC to publish the Massey, Massey Lecture Series, facing a competitive bid from Penguin Books, and Ansi aggressively promoted Race Against Time, with Lewis giving interviews to local media and attending receptions. CBC promoted the events nationally. Following an initial printing of 25,000 copies of the book by Anansi, along with the audio CDs produced by CBC Audio, there was a second printing in June 2006 with a new afterward section. Reception In the Canadian market, Race Against Time debuted at number 5 on the Globe and Mail's non-fiction bestseller list on October 29th. It spent 7 weeks at number 1 and 40 weeks in the top 10. Excerpts from the book were published in the Globe and Mail, the Montreal Gazette, and Alternatives Journal. At the Canadian Booksellers Association Libris Awards in 2000, or June 2006, the book won Nonfiction Book of the Year and Lewis won the Author of the Year Award. The book was shortlisted for the Pearson Writers Trust Prize and the Trillium Book Award. The book was positively received by reviewers. The prose has been called magnificent, lucid, eloquent, and passionate. Lewis' emotional appeal has been called remarkably candid, sincere, powerful, and moving. Connecting the diplomatic and policy-level work in the UN and uh, World Bank with specific effects on the ground in Africa and describing the problem of orphans were among the book's strengths. Lewis' criticisms are constructive, and since they come from such an ardent multilateralist employed by the United Nations, authoritative. One reviewer questioned several of Lewis' potential problem, or solutions sorry, as contributing to the same system that consistently fails to address its flaws. The same reviewer identified the book's weakness, a weakness as uh, it, its political slant, which ignores corrupt or inefficient African governments and the realities of asking corporations and Western governments to take steps against their self-interest, like cancelling agricultural subsidiaries in the case of governments and donating profits in the case of businesses. Several reviewers noted that the book could be used as an effective tool to educate about HIV-AIDS crisis and in the plight of people of sub-Saharan Africa. An article in the New York Times in October 2005 reported the book's criticism of South Africa government, singling out President Thabo Mbeki and Health Minister uh, Manto Chabalala uh, Msingmang. Lewis claimed that the South African gov uh, programs were half-hearted and confusing. A spokesperson for the health ministry characterized Lewis as a biased and uninformed judge of South Africa's situation and countered that they are rapidly expanding treatment programs. In August 2006, as a keynote speaker in the International AIDS Conference in Toronto, Lewis sustained his criticism, calling South Africa government, quote, still obtuse, dilatory, and negligent about rolling out treatment, unquote. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.